Tonight we have James Mina. He's from Kenya. He went to seminary in Kenya. And so our, we have a lot of people in our body that have actually gone to seminary in their home country. So he's one of them. Uh, he's been working on this presentation for a while. I'm very excited to hear what he has to say. We're actually going to present on African theology in two nights. And so the first half of this week's night. Next week we're going to take a break from African theology and then we'll come back to it uh, the following session. So James, take Shall we pray? I'm going to pray uh, in Swahili. That kind of uh, one of the national languages in Kenya. And then we shall proceed. Mtakatifu wabinguni baba wetu tukobeleza kujion here leo. Tukitaka kuulisikiliza neno lako ninataka ku alika uwepo wako bwana uwe pamoja nasi naposikiza mafunzo haya utuzingine na uwepo wako na nguvu zako na neema yako utupe kuelewa na ufahamu na utusaidie hata ndugu zangu dada zangu uwe pamoja na wao na uweze kuwabariki and we pray all this in Jesus name amen amen, amen. praise the lord uh, my name is James i was born in Kenya and i moved here to united states uh, in 2010 uh, i moved over here with my wife and when we've been here God has been good to us. We've been blessed with two boys, uh, very energetic boys, Andrew and Aaron. Andrew is five, and um, Aaron is, Andrew is seven, and Aaron is five. And uh, uh, I'm excited to be their daddy, and they are excited about me. Andrew is more <laughs> inquisitive, he's always, uh, talking about uh, discussing like what he learned in Sunday school here. And uh, like I remember one time he came and asked me if when we get to heaven he's going to see Moses. <laughs> and um, there was another picture I found in my phone with uh, Jesus crucified and uh, the one crucified and those who are crucifying him were kind of black like me. And he say, that not Jesus, that not Jesus. So he's always uh, very inquisitive. Today, uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to share with you about African theology. And uh, basically what I'm gonna teach you, uh, or share with you rather, it's more about uh, the history of Christianity in Africa. And uh, it's a long history. I'm not sure we can cover everything, but we're going to see uh, how far we can get. Uh, first, I'd like to share a few basic facts about Africa. Uh, the name Africa comes from two uh, languages, uh, Latin and Greek. Uh, Latin is Africa, which means sunny, and Greek is Africa, uh, which means without cold. So basically, uh, the Westerners took this from uh, the Greek and Latin, and uh, they combined it together to from Africa, and it basically means uh, like a dry land. Africa is the second uh, greatest, uh, largest continent in the world. It's home to 54 countries. It was formerly uh, colonized by British, uh, Germany, France, Italy, and Portugal. Uh, and it's home currently to an estimated 1.2 billion people and uh, it's also home to the longest river in the world, that's the river now, which runs through 11 countries. It's also uh, home to the largest waterfall in Africa, uh, Victoria Falls. 
uh, which is kind of one mile wide. And this is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And I know there are thousands of other amazing facts and good things about Africa, probably that we've never heard of. And uh, before I talk about uh, Christianity in Africa, I want to give a brief uh, kind of snapshot about global Christianity. And this goes back to around 1900. Uh, around this time, about three quarter of the global Christians, they lived in Europe. And uh, less than 20% of them were here in America and uh, about 5% in Asia and 5% or less than 5% uh, lived in Africa. But today, uh, as we're gonna see, Christianity is growing rapidly. It's more uh, globally sparse, more diverse, and more interconnected than any other time in history. And this is changing how people, how Christians understand their faith and how they practice their faith in our world today. As you can see from this picture here, all the purple uh, areas, those are the areas where uh, today Christianity has a population of more than 50%, and uh, the pink areas, those are the areas where it's uh, less than uh, between 10 and 50%. And then the gray areas is kind of half uh, less than five and other uh, religions. The main religions in Africa, uh, it's impossible to begin talking about Christianity without first talking about uh, the main religions. And we do have uh, some religions that were already there even before Christianity began, like um, African traditional religion. This is a combination of traditional beliefs and practices uh, that include various ethnic religions. Uh, and uh, Africa traditional religion is more of uh, oral than scriptural. It's not scriptural based. Uh, and is a belief system where people believe in a supreme being, a creator, believe in spirit, uh, the veneration of the dead, use of magic and traditional medicine or what they call herbal medicine. ATR customs sometimes uh, are shared by many local societies, but are usually unique to spe specific populations, ethnic groups, uh, geographic regions, uh, and uh, the main one of the main rules of uh, ATR, in short, is to is seen as uh, that of harmonizing nature with the supernatural. This has been in Africa for as long as Africa has existed. So it's very, very old. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, deeply rooted in Africa. But as we're gonna see, uh, things changed a little bit when Christianity came to Africa. And uh, today, uh, it, the presence of it uh, is very minimal to some uh, regions. And Christianity is the second main religion in Africa. It is admitted that there is uh, 631 million Christians in Africa today. And according to the most uh, recent data, Africa is now home to the most number of uh, Christians uh, globally, that 45% of the global Christians. And Islam is another main religion in Africa. Islam is spreading very fast since uh, uh, 600 uh, BC, and we're gonna see that. And also we have these other uh, religions like uh, Judaism and Hinduism and a few others. Like I said, uh, Christianity has been in Africa for as long as Africa has existed. And uh, this day of Pentecost, what we see here, this is the, the day when the Christian church was born. 
And as we know, uh, when the apostles were gathered in Jerusalem on that particular day of Pentecost, uh, when they received the Holy Spirit, uh, the Lord had promised them before he left. Uh, among them were some men from Africa, North Africa, particularly from Libya and uh, Egypt. And these men were together with the disciples in the upper room, praying and praising God and waiting for the Holy Spirit. And when they received the Holy Spirit, uh, they also took the gospel with them back to Africa and uh, immediately, and the gospel began to spread. And uh, we also know from Acts chapter 8 of the Ethiopian eunuch, uh, he was also from Ethiopia, uh, the guy whom Philip baptized, and we know uh, he also brought the gospel to Africa. And besides that, we also know that Africa has had uh, from, uh, from early days, has had uh, Christian leaders who has had a very significant influence on the history of Christianity. And these include uh, origin of uh, Alexandria, who is uh, credited to uh, as the, a, bi a biblical scholar and a philosopher and the first systematic the theologian. We also have other Christian leaders like Tertullian from Tunisia. Uh, this was uh, an early uh, Christian author from Tunisia. And uh, he was the first uh, Christian to write in Latin as opposed to Greek. And also, and also we have Athenasius. Uh, Athenasius was a bishop uh, from Alexandria, Egypt, a bishop in the uh, Coptic Orthodox Church tradition. And again, we also have uh, Augustine of Hippo, an early Christian theologian and philosopher. Uh, he was an influential Christian thinker uh, whose uh, thinking has uh, significantly influenced Western Christianity and, uh, and philosophy. So these were just a few of the early Christian leaders who had uh, uh, from North Africa who have uh, had a very uh, strong influence on the development of Christian throughout the history of Christianity. Early on, there was a church existed in North Africa and uh, under the Roman Empire and the the, Roman, the Romans had a kind of control of the northern region, even the church. And some groups they began to develop a desire to uh, kind of separate themselves from the imperial Roman Christianity. And we do have this church called the Donatist Church in North Africa. They broke away from the Roman Empire uh, Christianity and they kind of influ uh, influence other churches, as we're going to see, uh, who also broke from the Roman Imperial Roman Christianity. And the Donatists believed, uh, or rather argued, that Christianity must be faultless for uh, their ministries to be effective and for their prayers and sacraments to be valid. Uh, they also had uh, roots in the long-established Christian community of the Roman Africa province. Uh, but uh, the thing is they flourished during the fourth and fifth century. So it's kind of, they did uh, very well. They were well established during that time. And then around 400 and 500, the Coptic, Coptic church in Ethiopia also broke away from the imperial Roman uh, church or rather Christianity and they also influenced the other church in Ethiopia. Uh, they followed the same uh, theological orientation as the Coptic church and broke uh, from this uh, imperial Roman Christianity in North Africa. They wanted to be uh, by themselves. And then around 600 AD, uh, this is a time when uh, Islam came to Africa and it kind of took control of the northern region of Africa. And Christianity in the western part of Africa began to kind of slowly decline. 
and it continued from this period of 600 to around 1400. Uh, but Christianity in Egypt and Ethiopia kind of survived and continued steadily for uh, that, uh, that like uh, 800 years. And uh, looking at the map of Africa, we can see that uh, most of the northern half of the continent of Africa down to the eastern coast of Africa is um, was even today is predominantly Islam. And the southern part, that uh, from uh, 10 degrees uh, south of the equator, going all the way down to South Africa, uh, there has been a strong uh, presence of Africa, traditional religion, and also Christianity uh, around this time period uh, uh, was, uh, was basically in Egypt, the Coptic Church, and also the Coptic Church in Ethiopia. But uh, the other areas, uh, they were dominated by ATR and Islam on the north. And uh, around 1400 to uh, 1800, this period of about 400 years, this is a time when, uh, when mission, Christian mission be began in Africa, and it continued to the, uh, to the end of 19th century. And uh, we do have three main uh, Christian missions. We have the Roman Catholic missions and Protestant missions and the settler uh, Christians. I, I know you're wondering what is uh, settler Christians. I'm going to explain that to you in a, in a bit. And then uh, we do have African initiated or African independent churches. I also uh, explain that to you in a bit. Let's talk about the Roman, uh, the Roman missions. This was kind of the earliest, and this was uh, established by the Portuguese. Around 1400, 1500, uh, the Portuguese began to uh, sail on the uh, Atlantic Ocean down to the west coast of Africa uh, for trade, exploration, and exploitation, looking for whatever they could find there, and also looking for uh, colonization opportunities. And as they came uh, and started exploring uh, this part of West Africa, uh, they brought Christianity with them, uh, the Roman uh, Catholic Christianity. And what we see here, they had an encounter with uh, a king from Congo. Uh, this is, uh, as you can see from the map over here, uh, coming by boat, uh, it was easy for them to get to Congo and uh, they encountered with this king. And like in what we read from Acts chapter 10 about Cornelius, and now Acts chapter 16 about Lizzie and her family, uh, this king was attracted to the gospel, or rather to the Portuguese Christianity. And together with his family, they converted to Christianity. And he also, during his time, uh, began to preach the Christianity to his Congo people. Uh, the, the story says that uh, after the mass, he would also take the podium and kind of uh, explain the, the message to, of the gospel to the Congolese people. So he was kind of uh, uh, captivated by Christianity. And this is so amazing uh, to find it happening for, to him as a king. And uh, this kingdom, uh, Christian kingdom, existed for at least a century. But it began to decline in 1600 and early 1700. And the reason for the decline is uh, political instability in this uh, kingdom. And also, this is around the time slave trade began in Africa. 
and the other reason was there was argument uh, about uh, religious issues like uh, whether it was necessary for the priest to be celibate uh, for them to serve in the church as priest. So because of these reasons, uh, Christianity in this area began to decline. And then we do have the Protestant missions in the northern part of Nigeria. And this was uh, kind of championed by uh, a bishop. His name is Samuel Crowther. And Samuel Crowther was, uh, was uh, captured as a slave. And then um, he was recaptured by the British Navy and he was taken to England where he went to school. Uh, he was educated there, then got seminary education, and then he went back to Africa to be a missionary to his people with the Anglican Church, the CMS, or Church Missionary Society. And uh, his goal was to establish self-governing, self-propagating, and self-supporting uh, church in that part of West Africa. And uh, during his ministry, uh, within a period of 30 to 40 years, he was able to achieve this. Uh, but um, his ministry uh, almost uh, declined when the European missionaries came. And uh, after him, that region of West Africa, there was no other African bishop for a period of almost 100 years. But he had a very uh, strong, effective ministry and a very strong influence on that part until uh, the Europeans come, uh, came to that uh, part of region of West Africa. And then we do have what I call the settler uh, Christianity. Around uh, this time, the 1600s, uh, down to South Africa, as you can see here, there were also people traveling uh, to, to Asia, uh, doing business, exploration, and other further interests. And when the Dutch uh, travelers came to this part of West Africa, which is called the Cape Colony. They found this place was so good. The climate was uh, perfect, everything was good, and they liked the place, and they began to move in to settle here. And as they settled, they also uh, brought with them uh, Christianity, they established churches. But as we can see here, they also brought a very complex pattern of uh, Christianity here because first they established uh, white churches for themselves and their families, and then they established quote-unquote mission churches for the native uh, South Africans. And uh, they began a pattern of um, discrimination of Christianity based on, uh, on, on, on race. And the native South Africans didn't kind of uh, buy into this idea, so they kind of rebelled and began to establish their own Africa independent churches. That's how we have the, these uh, AIC churches. So they kind of left the missionary, the settlers' church, and moved to the, their own churches. And from 1400 to 1800, uh, what we see regarding Christianity in Africa is that there had been a uh, very little change uh, in terms of uh, the geography of Christianity. Northern half of Africa is still predominantly Islam. Uh, Ethiopia and Egypt uh, remain the center of Christianity. And the Christian presence at this time in Africa is very, 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 very weak uh, in the rest of the continent. And uh, around 1885, or by this time, 1885, only 5% of the African population at most uh, was Christian. So you can see, though uh, Christianity had been there for a long time, uh, the growth was very, very, very slow. The development was very slow. 
And then in the 20th uh, century, uh, this is a time uh, of changes in Africa. First of all, we have the colonialism period uh, when the, the colonies came to Africa and took domination of the African continent and which continued up to until 1960s when African nations began to uh, get their independence. And uh, during this time uh, of the 20th century, it was a time of incredible growth for Christianity. Uh, the African population today uh, is uh, six times larger than it was in 1885, uh, but the Christian population is the one that has grown most. It's uh, more than 50 times larger than it was in 1885. So you can see uh, that uh, significant development over there. And then, uh, a time of decolonization came uh, during, like I said, uh, beginning from uh, 1950s, the earliest. Uh, the country that got their independence earliest was around uh, mid 50s. It continued, uh, majority uh, got their independence in 1960s, and the late ones was uh, in 70s. So uh, after the World War II, most African nations wanted to be dependent from European domination, and they started gaining independence, like I said, in 1950s. Decolonization uh, was, was uh, kind of a good thing. It set the, uh, the context for Christianity to advance to the continent of Africa. And um, as we can see here, uh, just a comparison, uh, around 1900, 60% of the African population was embedded into Africa traditional religion, 35% uh, was uh, in Islam, and 10% or less of the population was Christian. But in, uh, in about 100 years later, that is in 2015, about 42% of the population was Islam, and African traditional religion has declined significantly to from 60% uh, in 1900 to, or 60% in 1900 to 7% in 2015. So you can see there has been a tremendous growth there. And Christianity has grown from 10% to 50% during that period. So that's a, a significant growth. Uh, but uh, still, the half uh, part of the African continent still remains uh, predominantly uh, Muslim, or rather Islam. In the southern part, like 75%, uh, they are Christian today. And this is just a graphic de description. The red uh, is the Islam part, and the green is the uh, Christian part of Africa. I know we're running uh, out of time. Uh, see where we can uh, see. I think we are doing good. We got a couple more slides. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Africanization of Christianity in Africa. As we have seen, Christianity has been there for a very long time. And uh, up, up until the 20th century, the growth has been very slow. Uh, and uh, there has been several reasons for that. But as we can see here, there, all along there has been an ongoing process to make uh, the gospel of Christianity African, to Africanize Christianity. 
Uh, you remember I mentioned about uh, King Alfonso from Congo in 1500s, uh, who was translating the Christian message to the Congolese people. Uh, because there was that desire for the local people to be able to hear the gospel in African language, the desire to make uh, the gospel their own, to make it African. And, uh, but the, this process became more visible uh, after uh, most countries in Africa got their independence, that between uh, 1950, 1960 to 1970. Uh, this is a time where African theologians began and scholars began to get together to think about how they could make uh, Christianity in Africa more African, how they could uh, uh, make the, the gospel more of their own. And as we can see here, we do have, uh, this is uh, Dr. John Gatto, who was a uh, president of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. And there was a meeting in Zambia in 1974, and he made a call for the Western missionaries to kind of uh, let the African Christians alone for some time to allow them to have time of their own, a time to reflect on their own faith and their own culture, and to kind of explore their own Africanness, a time to explore their cultural roots of uh, African Christianity, and also to organize uh, for their self-sustainability. And after that, after John Gatto, we also had uh, groups of people, like I said, theologians, uh, like Charles Nyamiti from Tanzania. Uh, he was a theologian who was the champion of what we call inculturation theology. Uh, we do have Dr. Uh, John Beatty from Kenya. He's a world-renowned theologian and scholar. Uh, he, like Nyamiti, he's also an inculturation theologian. And then from Nigeria, we do have Bolaji Ido. And from Ghana, we have Dr. Kwame Bidiako and Masi Adioe. Uh, these theologians, they came together uh, and began to work on uh, developing what we call today African theology, kind of a way of uh, making uh, Christianity and the, and the gospel more African, because all along uh, what they received was the Western gospel and they kind of felt like uh, they received the gospel and then they lost their culture. So they were feeling like, like uh, Christianity was still foreign to them and they wanted to make it their own. And these are the guys who kind of helped them in that process. And uh, that brings us to the end of uh, this presentation.